Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Simon. It says, Embracer, when the river runs dry. Have fun. This comes off of their No Gospel album, which is from 2017. Let's dive into this and see what Embracer is bringing to the table today. I don't think this is supposed to be felt in three, but that's the only pulse we really have right now. So some really cool polyrhythmic stuff going on. Love the cymbal work here. His voice is very smooth. So much passion in that delivery. The staging of the drums are really interesting, but it's growing on me. There's so much movement in the drums and the guitars are just hit a couple of notes and let them ring out. <laughs> Carrying the bass kick rhythm over to the ride. Yeah, 
That's a very cool song. I think the thing that most people are going to pick up on there is just the atmosphere of it. It is wildly dense and heavy, uh, but interestingly groovy. And that actually comes in two parts. One is the composition and one is the, uh, the production of it and the effects used. So I want to, I want to start off with the effects, particularly on the guitars and bass. Uh, the bass has a nice width to it, very large tone, sits on the bottom of the song and really supports everything in the track. Above that we have the guitar and there is a ton of uh, reverb on this. There is the echo that goes on. You hit it once and you get like three or four notes out of it. Uh, we actually heard the right at the beginning giving us that triplet feel. And uh, I found this to be kind of funny though. The drums are very... In intricate lots of work going on to play those and the guitarist just like hits two notes and then they echo and reverberate and they're large sounds and that's all the the guitarist needed to do in some parts all the drummer was putting so much work <laughs> into into everything going on um and i, I thought that uh the differing amount of effort was hilarious but the end result is undeniable it works so well to have all of this movement there mixed with this heavy weight these larger than life sounds i mean when the guitar hits those higher notes especially there at the end of the song um when the uh vocals cut out and we were just on that final uh like final 40 seconds or something and it's the third note i think of the progression and it's just it has this piercing tone that comes out of the guitar and it's it's just this bright light amidst all the darkness in the song and it's like there's this moment of clarity and then the weight kicks back in i love that a lot of that comes down to composition or sorry to production more so than what's written uh the the progression of notes is necessary sure for that to to be felt but i mean a lot of it is just how that one note pierces and everything else envelops and the way that it cuts through everything the production on this is just phenomenal and it builds this heavy weighty sound throughout the entirety of the song and we can even uh, extrapolate this towards the guitar solo the tremolo picking and how all of the attacks are creating all these overlapping sounds on top of each other creating this texture that uh, that works really well at, at again emphasizing this weight in the song it almost sounds like the guitar is screaming and the screams are bouncing off of a very small cavern and just overlapping uh, waves on top of each, sound waves on top of each other. And it, uh, it's a very affecting bridge to this track. Absolutely gorgeous. Now this weight, though, that the production has is juxtaposed, I think, by the rhythmic dexterity of the drums. So many of the drum lines in here have a heavy syncopation to them where we do get a backbeat on like one and three, but there's also these eighth notes prior to the beat or after the beat that creates this uh, very light, uh, dexterous rhythm on top, of, on top of all this weight. And it almost feels kind of jazzy at times with its heavy syncopation there's also a large amount of symbol work on here the symbols are very cool i love the way that they're used not usually just as a way to add a bright shimmer to a darker track a heavier track but also rhythmically interesting especially when we start using them more melodically and you can hear the drummer shifting between different types of symbols to create different shimmers um, that kind of stuff's really cool. There's also all the polyrhythms coming out of the drums, which make them feel more complex. It is all over the place. Well, you know, you can get uh, a slower quarter note attack from a cymbal and then have a triplet pulse from the, the bass kick and then every other beat on the snare. Um, and then a faster four coming off of like hi-hat or something like that. It is all 
over the place and I love it. It makes this feel very dense. And that density adds on to the weight of the production of the guitars, the, the largeness of them. It also does create this lightness, light, light on your toes kind of feeling with all the uh, syncopation across the drums because of all of these different rhythms going on. And I think that does kind of alleviate some of the weight a little bit to create something a bit more groovy and movable and dancey. It doesn't feel like there's a weight on your shoulders when you really lean into and key into what the drummer's doing. Because you just kind of want to lightly move your body to it. But I think that still the complexity of it, of it all is something that positively affects the song and, and keeps that weight present throughout. And so, it's, jeez, uh, I don't want to, I'm going to say it. The drums are the highlight of this song for me, 100%. The drummer just kills it from start to finish. Uh, when the guitar came in at, to start the song off, and I heard that triplet sound off of the uh, the delay, I was like, okay, okay, that's that's pretty cool. But what's what's our pulse here? You know, I counted out that really fast three, but when the whole band came in, I felt the four. And from that moment, the drums just, I locked into them. Everything about the song to me is very drum focused, and some of that comes down to the production too, which is very alluring because of how different it is. I mentioned that the drum staging is kind of bonkers and it's because instead of having the entire drum kit center and a little bit out from it, mostly in front of the listener, some of this stuff is hard panned. It feels like there's massive gaps between the furthest instruments, uh, your hi-hat and your floor tom and the stuff at the center, your snare and your bass kick. And it isn't that they're all connected. It actually feels like there's three different kits uh, in the production. It's it's kind of wild, but it allows the drums to be at the forefront of the mix in a way that honestly kind of works. It took me a second to get into, but once I clicked with it, yeah, there's no other way that this could have been produced. I love it. Um, and it allows the drums to be heard in a way. It allows the different rhythms going on to be more present in the mix to be heard by the listener um very front and center to kind of steal the spotlight i think a little bit from the guitars but the guitars end up being a bit more atmospheric sitting around the drums and vocals which i think ends up I mean, in in most songs that'd be kind of awkward as far as rock's concerned but on this track, I think it ends up working. It, it creates the bubble that everything else exists within. And it, uh, it's, a, it's a really smart decision. Awkward. I, like I said, most other bands wouldn't be able to pull this off. But it ends up working very well for them. And so the last thing i, I got to bring up is the vocals. The dude is just... He's got so much passion. So much soul in his delivery. I love it. Especially when the chorus kicks in and he goes from something a bit um, lighter in power, uh, more almost colloquial. It, it feels uh, conversational. Colloquial is probably wrong, but conversational is the one I wanted. And uh, kind of pushes it up into this elevated, larger than life sound. Just full on delivery, tons of passion and power behind his words. Um, and completely delivering it with, with a soul too. It's just... Mm, dang, it is good. I don't know any other way to describe it. I probably need to get some vocal coach in here to, to dig into the nitty gritty of it. But the dude has a nice round tone. It's very full. It's projected well. Um, there's almost no, no nasaliness to his tone either, which I think it just works well. It gives it this really big sound. Um... I like I said, the passion behind it. You can just tell he's putting out everything of himself into it. And it just sounds so good. It, it, it's demanding. It's hard for your attention to, to leave it. If it wasn't for the drums being so cool, I think I'd just be hyper-focused on the, the vocals here. Which is probably intentional too. The production places them pretty high above everything else. It's... It's produced in, in a very mainstream way where the vocals are the highlight. And as far as the song is concerned, it gives us our lead melody uh, amidst 
a song that's primarily atmosphere and texture. The drums do give us some rhythm, but there's nothing else really that's there for for the spotlight to, to be this uh, this singular moving idea. And so the vocals fill that role in in the composition. There's also a lot of lyrics in here, which tells me it's a very vocal focused song. And then of course, like I said, the production, the vocals are just placed above everything else. So it all it all sort of works together for the vocals to do everything that they need to do there to produce them in this way. Um, and then, you know, the last thing is structure. It's A, B, A, B, C, B. Not, not much to say there. I do like the, the little narrative I get out of this, though. It's, it's very wounded. A lot of weight to it. And I, I, I mentioned that the tremolo guitar kind of felt like screaming or wailing to me. Uh, I feel a lot of pain in this song. I don't know if anyone else picks up on that. There's not a lot of nuance to it. It's heavyweight and pain and and passion maybe a, a want to be better a drive to get out of this i don't know it wears its emotions on its sleeve though it's very direct with what it's trying to say so speaking of what it's trying to say let's dive into some lyrics and see what's going on there interest it is about a broken person not necessarily i think what i was expecting given the atmosphere. I think that there are some parallels here, but uh, it went in a very interesting direction. It's about somebody who feels like they were given a, a bad hand in life. And so they've come up from nothing and they will do absolutely nothing. Sorry, they will do absolutely everything in order to um, avoid returning to that nothing. At one point says, uh, you know, my river ran dry the water turned into dust. You were born in holy water. I was taken into the mud. So you, you had a better life than me. Yours was privileged. Mine wasn't. He follows this up. He says, I would black out the sun. I would trade anyone's love for silver and gold, for kingdom and for throne. I'll do anything not to return to that mud. But he recognizes the risk of this. He says, but when it all falls apart, I'll grovel alone. He knows he would trade everything, including safety net, social net, uh, you know, having friends around, anything. He'll live alone and on edge his whole life if he has to. But he knows even that's not going to work forever. And uh, it's interesting, this is actually towards the end of the song that we actually see this turn. I think this is the thesis of the entire song right here. Every other stanza is understandable through these two. We actually kick the song off, though. It says, sweating from the bridges I burn. I really like that. <laughs> that burning the bridges creates heat. You sweat from it, but also it's the, uh, analysis, the an uh, analogy? Uh, of you know sweating bullets being anxious you don't have anywhere to turn so that makes you more on edge but also the idea of yeah dude that's so good anyway sweating from the bridges i burn saved by some kind of grace i don't deserve and when i take my brother's hand hold the knife to his back when i run him through i'll say the devil is alive and he spoke to me greater men will try and not succeed i was like dude what is this you know Burning bridges? Okay, yeah, that's one thing. But backstabbing your brother when he helps you out? Who is this person? I'm intrigued. And it isn't until, you know, a few stanzas later, I'm like, oh, I get it. I, I get it. This guy, this guy's had a rough life. Um, and then we get to the chorus. It says, cost of a life is that no one gets out free. Free. We're forever bound to the burdens that we keep, broken promises intent on, nev on never being meant, shiver from the thought of it, life will reap what is wrought of us when the river runs dry. So I like how the river runs dry is how he described his, his life. It started out that way. He was, he was born with nothing. The little he had ended up running out, but uh, also the river running dry is a metaphor. For the end of life as well. We start where we 
end. We end where we began. Life is a cycle, the circle of life. Um, I, I didn't catch that whole cyclical element the first time through. But that's kind of nice too. But, you know, he understands that, uh, he says, life will reap what it is wrought of us. That whatever we do in life is going to affect our, our outcome. And burning so many bridges, backstabbing so many people, it's only going to make life worse for him as he keeps aging, as he makes more and more enemies. So, yeah, it's a really complex character here where they they understand who they are. They lean into it. And they understand it's not perfect, but it's the best that they have given the bad hand that they were dealt at the beginning. So yeah, like I said, there's definitely pain in here. There's sorrow. It's just not quite the direction I thought it was going to go in. It's somebody who is running from their past as, as fast as they can, not caring what kind of hurdles they knock over in their, in their bursts of speed, knowing that eventually it's going to catch up to them. They're going to get winded, and the end of their life isn't going to be as great as they would want it to be, but hopefully it's better than where they started. And they're risking their future for their present. And they understand that. And it's just, yeah. It's a really good character study right here. All right. Those are my thoughts. Embracers, when the river runs dry. What did you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you have thoughts and opinions completely opposite of anything I said and you picked up on some things I didn't, please put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.